Generics are really interesting in that they're kind of tied to a function's execution context. What that means is that you can make a function which has one generic locked inside of it, then make another function in the future out of that function with the first generic still locked and add another one. And here's what I mean by that. Here, we want to make a function called make key remover. Now, make key remover, what it's going to return is a function to remove keys from an object. So here, the expected case for this object is that it's going to be a new object with just the key of C. So here we're making a function and here we're actually calling the function using it. So how do we get around to that? Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to say key extends string here. And this is the first function, so the, the key remover one. And we're going to say this keys is a or key array. So this is an array of keys. And you can see now that the keys generic has been locked in as A or B. Now, what we want to do next is we want to take in the object, which is going to be, uh, I'm going to give it a generic of obj. And obj is going to be here. I'll just save it to get the formatting. Now, obj, as you can see here, it's been locked in. The generic is locked in here into the key remover. And that means that we need to just remove the keys from the object. So we're going to return from this function. Uh, I think it's omit and then obj and then key. And this, if I just return this as any to quieten down that error, what's going on here is that now we've got omit, which removes keys from an object, and we're removing A and B. So you can see that the key remover locks in that first generic, which is just up here. And then this one, when we actually instantiate the second function, is it locks in this generic. And now the new object, it only has C available to it. Pretty cool.